Hi folks, so this is the review of the completed AR Pro Mark II. Um, everything that I've learned from the test plane has gone into this one. In fact, I've learned a lot building this one and some of those things are gonna go into this one, which is the second plane I'll be taking to Germany this year. Um, this one, the only difference with this one really is that it's uh, running a Brother Hobby Reunion um, 2318-1250 kV motor with a 9x5 uh, cam carbon light aeronaut prop. And this one is running the Sunny Sky 2216-1400 um, um, kV with the APC uh, 8x4.5. But also, uh, I'm going to be running these props when I've got a good landing zone because these are quite brittle. But these props are fantastic. Aeronaut, cam carbon light in 8x4.5. So I'm going to try and go through this in a kind of a logical sequence and uh, so it makes sense and so I've got some notes here so if I'm looking this way it's because I need to read my notes so I don't get this kind of miss anything out and make sure I explain everything that I've done. Um, okay so the um, the FC that's inside here that's underneath the uh, the 3D printed cover is um, an F405 uh, Matek F405 wing um, discontinued ESC but I did buy uh, four or five of them at the beginning and um, this is the last one that I've got. So it's gone in there. Um, quite excited to use some of the new um, MATEC um, FCs, but I've got to say this has been a real workhorse for me and I'm really, really delighted with it. I know it inside out now, so that's the, uh, the FC. Uh, in the back bay, we've got the T-Motor 55 amp ESC. Now this ESC, these T-Motor ESC I found ESCs, I found them to be absolutely bulletproof. Um, unlike those hobby wing ones that I tried, um, which they all caught fire. So uh, especially when you you know you landed hard, they the jolt seemed. To, I think not sure if they were faulty or because I bought them on AliExpress if they were fakes. I don't know, but uh, these are genuine T motor ones, and I'm going to be sticking with these from now on. So the, the LiPo that I'm running in this plane is a C, uh, China Hobby Line 5000 milliamp hour 4S um, 70C LiPo. Now, um, if you watch my maiden video of this plane, it didn't go terribly well. It started to rain. I panicked, thinking that we was going to get lots of water inside the electronics and uh, was going really slowly for some reason, trying to, to stop the rain from going into the, uh, the air intakes. Um, quite crazy th thinking back now. It was completely dry actually inside after I picked up from the crash. But I went so slowly that I stalled it and it crashed. And I've spoken to Mark and a few other people actually that say that this plane um, is much better and anti-stalling uh, characteristics if you if you basically have the CG on the front of the mark. So I've actually moved the CG forward a bit and uh, I'm using one of these little weight pods that I designed. So this is the little um, 3D printed pod, a little lid on it so you can fill it with ball bearings or whatever you want, lead, anything you like to get the desired CG. And that just pushes into the front of the plane. So if you change LiPo, you can pull it out um, and have different pods for different LiPos. And it's designed so that um, these, uh, if you see like that, the, the hatch there, it doesn't interfere with the weight pod. So, um, yeah, so I've now got an extra 70 grams in the front, which takes this plane up to just over 1650 grams. So quite heavy for an AI Pro, but I do quite like that heaviness. It seems to give that stability that I like when I'm flying it. Uh, servos um, using the Tower Pro MG90Ds. These are uh, Metal Gear digital servos. I've, I've been using them for a long time. I did have one failure, but having said that, I did have two failures with the Emacs um, ESO AMDs. Um, and then when I inspected, I realized that it was actually binding. Um, there was something out of alignment on the servo horn and it was binding. I think that probably damaged it over time. So I probably will be looking for some other servos in the future, but for now I'm running those. They have been great so far, um, apart from that one failure. So in the side pods, on this side we've got a DJI Air unit, so it's the original DJI Air unit, and I'm running these little Foxier low profile lollipops. You don't get as much range with these antennas as you do with the, um, the stock ones, but they are a little bit lower profile. And I've got that uh, Air unit on the latest firmware to run with Goggles 2, um, which means it acts more like an O3 Air unit, so all of the hacks for you know, the 1200 milliwatt is all gone now. Um, it's obviously using a different protocol, but yeah, um, that allows me to, to run it with the Goggles 2. So I'm kind of using my old legacy DJI Air units with Goggles 2, which I really like. So yeah, um, that's what's in there. And in the right pod, we've got the uh, HGLRC GPS. I've used them for years. I've never had a failure. 
They, they find satellites pretty quickly. They're quite small and light. I can't say anything you know, bad about them. They've just been really brilliant and perfect for me. Okay, so that's that. Um, so in the, in the side pod here in the wing, um, I've got the, uh, the Crossfire Nano in there. And um, one of the things I've learned from this plane, which is going to be incorporated into the new one, is with the Nano, I've actually put the soldered pins on there. So um, I can actually put a, a connector plug into the cables that go into that, um, that pod in the wing. So if I ever need to change the Nano or have a problem with it, I can just unplug it and not have to desolder it, which is a bit of a pain, especially when you, uh, you laminate the wings or you put Oro cover on the wings like I do. So yeah, that's a nice little uh, idea that I've, I've thought of. I think that will be good for that plane. Okay, so um, other mods, are the Elevons. So this plane, uh, as uh, the test plane, uh, as the new plane um, is running Bolts Elevon. So here's a Bolts Elevon, really stiff. Here's a standard Elevon, and this standard Elevon does have the carbon fiber rod in it, and it's just super bendy and flexible, like nothing on earth. This torsional strength on, on these is just significantly better. Um, and as a result of that, I've beefed up the horns. So I'm running these McGregor aluminium horns, and I've actually learned that when you tighten these horns up, because the bolzer is quite soft when you compress it, I've made these little plates just to allow me to get nice tight um, uh, horns on there and uh, without compressing the bolts. So nothing moves at all, everything's super rigid. Um, so I don't have any problems with, uh, with the tune because anything's actually moving due to any compression or change in the, uh, the parameters or the position of the horn on the, uh, on the Elevon. So yeah, that's, I'm really happy with those. Been using them on the test plane, absolutely brilliant. Um, the other uh, main mod is Obviously, the fact that the uh, entire fuselage and the winglets and the hatches are all covered with E6000 glue that's been thinned with toluene. And I've covered that in a previous video, um, if you want to see exactly how I did it. And I've done the same with this plane here. Um, now, in terms of weight gain, um, it added 47 grams to the plane. So I weighed the fuselage on this one that I did. Uh, pre uh, and post with the hatches and the winglet so in total it adds about 47 grams so under 50 grams extra weight for the protection it gives I think is really worth it and it gives a really nice finish as well so that's uh, the coating on there other mods are the servo covers so these are 3d printed I prime them and then I spray them these are with metallic black um, little tip on these is that um, I actually print them in two parts so I print the base um, and then I flip it over because then I've got the nice smooth side from the glass plate on my 3D printer so it doesn't take much sanding. Then just, just sand the top piece and then put the two together and run a little bead of super glue around the edge on the inside and the outside. And then they're you know, much quicker and much easier preparation to get a nice finish when you're sanding them. If you print them all in one piece, then obviously the upper side is the side that you want to paint and you get all the marks. I mean, my 3D printer is only an Ender 3 Pro. It's not super slick. Um, so yeah, you, you have, have to end up sanding all that down. So if you do them upside down, uh, you get a much better finish. So I've learned that on this build. Other 3D parts are the, uh, the, the, the GoPro mount, um, the Hero 6, which I'm running. Uh, obviously the servo covers that we've mentioned, the, um, the ESC mount, the servo cover, the weight pod, um, the RX Nano cover, there's a plate that mounts the, uh, the Nano RX into the wing. Um, so I think that's pretty much uh, it. The only thing that I've done that are probably differently to the test plane is that I've learned that with any of the DJI air units, the original air unit or the O3, they get hot if they're not actually in the air. So uh, I'll just connect this LiPo and show you. I've actually built a switch with an LED into the uh, actual wing here. So um, I can actually turn on the, the air unit independently of the LiPo and the little LED just shows me whether it's, it's green to go or not which is uh, really useful. So yeah um, that's a nice little mod. Um, it allows you to have the plane on on the ground and powered to do whatever you want to do with a laptop in terms of checking things without actually uh, overheating your, uh, your air unit. So yeah um, that's uh, that's pretty much it I think um, on this one. Um, on this one I'm using the the, uh, the hatches with the um, design for the 
DJI because you can cut away a bit on the inside and you can actually clear your strap and lipo a bit better. So these hatches sit a little bit more flush with these big lipos in. Um, and then I've got my hatch lock at the top there, um, which is just 3D printed. It just stops it off. I have lost a hatch on this plane going really fast where the air pressure has built up and popped it off. So little hatch cover um, and then you're good to go. So yeah, um, that's, uh, that's it really. That's, that's uh, the plane. Uh, when you do, if you do decide to cope with E6000, you'll notice that your hatches fit much more tightly and snugly. Um, so yeah, that's how she looks. And uh, underneath, so the maiden was pretty poor because of the rain. So I can't wait to get out and uh, give this plane a really good test flight and, uh, and, and see if it flies as well as the test plane. I mean, the test plane has been crashed and it's really beat up and it still flies great. So hopefully this one with everything just so pristine and everything so tight and the bolts of elevons, um, fingers crossed it should fly really, really nicely. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'll put everything in the description. I'll put links to all the parts or list of all the parts. Um, I put a link into all my 3D printed parts. I put them on my Google Drive so you can help yourself to those and, and use any of those that you want. And if there's any questions, you know, pop them in and I'll try and answer them. Um, I'm no expert, but uh, I have been fiddling around with the AR Pro uh, for quite some time now. I really do like this plane. And um, yeah, um, obviously, as you can see here, the next uh, project is a bit different. It's, uh, it's building a mini drag, which I also would like to take to Germany with me if I could as well. So yeah, that will be uh, coming up soon. Okay, I think that's enough to say. Uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, have a good day and take care.